you know, the world compounds very fast. Uh, you know, banking as a whole has earned at rates that are well beyond on tangible equity, you know, well beyond, I think, what much more glamorous businesses have earned in, in, in recent years. Well, banking is a good business if you don't do dumb things on the asset side. I mean, basically, and I, it, 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 it's a business that uh, the banks we own earn between uh, the commercial banks earn between 12 percent and 16 percent or so uh, on tangent, net tangible assets. That's a good business. It's a fantastic business against the long-term bond, uh, you know, at 2%. Uh, if you have a choice between a 2% instrument and a 12% instrument, which one's going to win over time? So, so if you ask me whether I think uh, uh, banks are going to go down where they only earn 3 or 4% on tangible assets, I don't think that'll happen. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask you to comment on the relative PE multiples of bank stocks versus the S&P. They seem to be at, you know, 30... 35 to 50 year relative lows to the S&P and I was wondering if that's a result of the market a change in the market's perception of the forward growth rates of uh, banks or uh, if, if if the market is perceived that there's a change in risk there you're asking about the performance of what group compared to the S&P uh, banks banks well and, and what was your assertion about the performance historically? Well, the relative multiple of bank stocks versus the S&P. Back in the 40s, 40s, 50s, 60s, they commonly traded at, say, one times an S&P multiple, and now they're maybe half that level. Yeah, Harry Keefe used to have a lot of figures on this. And uh, I don't really think about uh, about them. I mean, the, the, the appropriate multiple for a business relative to the S&P will depend on what you expect that business to achieve in terms of returns on on equity and incre re incremental returns on incremental equity versus that s and I mean, you've got if you've got two dy types of businesses, and we'll say the s and earns X on equity and and can deploy an additional amount of capital at Y, and then you compare that with any other business, and that's how you determine which one is cheaper. Uh, I would not characterize all banks as the same. I mean, we have in this room John Fourlines, who runs the Bank of Granite in Granite, North Carolina, and they've earned 2 percent on assets without taking any real risk for decades, and it's, it's a tremendous record. And then you have other banks that have been run by people that took them right into the ground. I mean, it, uh, whether it was First Pennsylvania going back 30 years ago, I think it was John Bunning, and they, I mean, they, they're, they're, not a, they're not a homogeneous a group. We own a couple of stock in a couple of banks. We own stock in M and T that has an exhibit downstairs today. We own stock in Wells Fargo, and we think those institutions are somewhat different than than other businesses. So, I don't think there's. A, I, it goes back to that earlier question. People always want a formula. You know, they. I mean, they they go to the intelligent investor and they think you know somewhere they're going to give me a little formula and then I can plug this in and then I'll make lots of money. And it really doesn't work that way. What you're trying to do is look at all the cash a business will produce between now and Judgment Day and discount it back at a rate that's appropriate and then buy it a lot cheaper than that. And uh, it, it, whether the money comes from a bank, whether it comes from an internet company, or whether it comes from a brick company, the money all spends the same. Now the question is what are the economic characteristics of the internet company or the bank or the brick company that tell you how much cash they're going to generate over long periods in the future? And I would come to very different answers, you know, on M and T Bank versus some other bank. Uh, so I, w I wouldn't want to have a I wouldn't want to have a single yardstick or a, you know relative PE that I went by. Uh, I think that banks have sold uh, a good many banks have sold at very reasonable prices. We bought all of a bank in 1969. We bought a bank in Rockford, Illinois. Charlie and I went and looked at. We must have looked at a half a dozen banks at that. You know, in a two or three year period. And Absolutely. Yeah, we we trudged around and and we found we found some very oddball banks that we liked, uh, and they were characterized by uh, by very little risk on the asset side and very cheap money on the deposit side, and even Charlie and I can understand that, uh, and 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 low prices incidentally too. And then they passed the Bank Holding Company Act in 1969, and and they 
killed off our chances to do anything further in buying all of banks. So we look at banks. We will own bank <clears throat> stocks from time to time in the future. We'll probably buy stock in other banks. And we've also seen all kinds of banks ruined. Um, I think it was, um, what was the fellow, M.A. Shapiro, the, uh, 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 who came up with the uh, statement. He said there are more banks than bankers. And if you think about that a bit, you'll see what I mean. Uh, there have been, a, you know, there have been a lot of people that uh, have run banks in a very injudicious manner, but that's made for opportunities for, for other people. But, uh, uh, there, a lot of banks have disappeared over time. I mean, up in Buffalo, where where uh, Bob Wilmers runs M and T, uh, there were some other very prestigious institutions that that went right down the tubes, and a lot of that happened in the early 90s or late 80s. So I, I wouldn't look for a single metric like relative PEs to determine what, uh, how to invest money. It, uh, you really want to look for things you understand and where you think you can see out for a good many years in a general way as to the cash that can be generated from a business and then if you can buy it at a cheap enough price compared to that cash, it doesn't make any difference what the name of it attached to the cash is. Charlie? Yeah, I think uh, the questioner is maybe even asking the wrong people that question. I, I would argue that Warren and I have failed to properly diagnose banking. Uh, I think we underestimated the general uh, uh, good results that would happen because we were so afraid of what non-bankers might do when they were in charge of banks. There are a number of banks that over the last five or six years on tangible net worth, a number of them have a lot of goodwill, but on tangible net worth have earned over 20 percent on equity. <clears throat> you would think that would be difficult for an industry to do dealing in a commodity like money, and of course the bankers will argue it's not a commodity, but it's got a lot of commodity-like characteristics. And you would think those kind of returns in a world of 6% long-term interest rates and much lower, you'd think that would be very hard to, well, you, you, you would have thought it wouldn't have occurred, and you think it'd be hard to sustain. We've, we've been wrong in the sense that, that uh, uh, banks have earned a lot more money on tangible equity than Charlie and I would have thought possible. Now, I think to some extent they've done it because they've stretched out equity much further than was the case 20 or 30 years ago. I mean, they, they operate with more dollars working per dollar of equity than, than, than people thought was prudent 30 or 40 years ago. <clears throat> but however they've done it, they've earned, a number of banks have earned very high returns on equity uh, in recent years. And if you earn high enough returns on equity and you can keep employing more of that equity at the same rate, that's also difficult to do. You know, the world compounds very fast. Uh, you know, banking as a whole, has earned at rates that are well beyond on tangible equity, you know, well beyond, I think, what much more glamorous businesses have earned in, in, in recent years. And Charlie, do you have any further thoughts on that? Well, I, I say again, we've, we didn't diagnose it as it actually turned out. And uh, even worse than that, we haven't changed. And even worse than that, we won't. <laughs> <laughs>